So how many are there? Sir? There's five. Some kind of some kind of little venture sparrow. We don't know what kind yet. Nice woven big old nest. There's a little one down in there somewhere, but I probably have just about enough to eat right now. And let's give them a little break and I'll see them again later. So we don't risk rescue just eagles, huh? No, little ones get cared for too. Yes, they do. Hard to see, they're so deep down in their nest. That's okay. They'll grow, and then we'll see what they are. Mm -hmm. Are they good for now? Yep. Okay. Don't take much to feed them. There's my girl. This this one we don't know what's wrong with it. It uh, was out in the middle of a field about 10 miles west of town. Uh, it's weak. It's a little bit thin, but there's no broken bones. There's no sign of physical damage, so we're we're not exactly sure what. But uh, you know, basically, let's get it. We got some fluids in it already. Let's get some food into it and and uh, see where we're at. It's uh, been a busy night. Um, it's about 10 o'clock at night right now, and and uh, this evening I picked up a baby great horned owl that was orphaned. Uh, a gentleman called about a a hawk that he found injured but it wasn't a hawk it was a swallow and he says oh I thought it was a baby hawk and it says no it's a full-grown swallow and uh, and then this eagle as well so it's been a very busy evening for us I'm trying to get oh does that hurt that was a good bite yeah that was a good bite good girl yeah I thought that's gonna bleed Come on, sweetie. That's my girl. There you go. Yeah, that's my girl. These are super big mice, and so they're a little sloppy to work with. But we'll get, get a little food in her. Got some fluids in her. And uh, you know, we just have to see how she is tomorrow morning. She's not as thin as some of them that we've had in. So I think she's got a good chance if whatever whatever is wrong with her hopefully it's not some kind of poison or something. But her reactions are very good so we'll just have to see how it goes. So why don't you grab me my headlight soon and uh Got a young wild dove here that got brought to us a few days ago. We're force feeding that doesn't want to eat from us, but we're trying to keep it fed until it can learn how to feed itself. And this afternoon somebody brought us up three little baby quail, and we're hoping we can get those to eat. We're trying to encourage them to pick at the got little food crumbles down here. We're trying to get them to pick at it, and sometimes they will come around and and uh, pick at stuff. That's the goal, is to get them to start pecking at the seed. Put it up here where you can see it. Hi, oh, baby. It's food time. Quite a wiggly little thing. Yeah, I had to force feed it the first many days. They usually put their mouths right up inside their uh, parents' mouths, which is why it's awkward. So he's, and then they open their mouths once they get up inside their parents' mouth. Come on, open.
And then they flap their wings and bob their heads. Enough, he says. And then these little quail are kind of cute. Come on, little guys. They're starting to pick at the seed now, but I, we've been teaching them by poking with this, and um, so they'll they'll pick at the end of this too. Huh? That's the other little thing. Who else wants some? Now we're not sure, there's a couple of different, about three different kinds of quail, four different kinds of quail found in Utah. We're not really sure which ones these are, they're just little tiny babies. Uh, but they're a native quail. And uh, their their mother was hit by a car and the, the three little ones were left orphaned. But they're coming along, they're starting to feed and the little doe says he wants some more. Mm -hmm. Want some more? Yeah. Okay, let's there go. And the dove is an Inca dove. Uh, we've all heard of the ringneck doves, which is our native dove that's most common, and we also ringneck nut. Or I mean, the, the morning dove, the dove that's very common and native. And then we have the ringneck dove, the Asiatic ringneck dove, which is an invasive species that was brought over uh, in the pet industry for uh, uh, cage as a cage bird for ornamental purposes, and. Uh, the Inca dove is a little less known, but uh, it is one of our little native doves. And it's a very, very small dove, very tiny. They nest on the ground. And so you don't usually find their nest because they're just little little tiny patches of uh, grasses and, and twigs under a bush in the, on the ground is where they nest. He's pecking at a spot on the glass and the in the aquarium. Yeah, the dove's eating a little bit on its own. That's good. It should be starting to feed itself. So it hopefully will, in the next week, uh, be feeding all on its own and no longer need us to hand feed it. Baby birds are cute no matter what kind they are. Yeah, it's good to watch the little Inca dove uh, picking at food. He's coming along nicely. I think the quail and the dove encourage each other. They do, and that's actually, uh, for all of you that ever come across, you know, quail in the wild and you think you want to take them home and raise them, the problem that we have with these little quail is if you're all by themselves, um, they don't have anyone to encourage them to eat and they don't, and they do very badly. And so please don't pick them up and bring them home. Uh, with three baby quail, we have a, it's still tough, but we have a better chance. And uh, the little Inca dove, uh, as it learns to pick food itself, the, the baby quail watch the Inca dove, the Inca dove watch the baby quail, and they encourage each other to feed. And so just one of these little birds, especially one little quail, has a very, very low chance of survival because they, they have no one to encourage them. Well, that's our little morning feeding with quail. Hope everyone has a good day and stay safe and healthy. Okay, this is a juvenile great horned owl. It's a fledgling. This is one that uh, left the nest. It's, it's pretty much full grown, it does, but it still doesn't have all of its feather growth done yet, but it's pretty much full grown. And it was found at, um, the Discovery Park here in Cedar City. There's a, 
a bunch of um, pinyon and juniper trees uh, down off the cliff and around the sides from the park. And so that's probably where the nest was. And this was, was at the park and people called to uh, have me come pick it up. They didn't want the kids to get hurt. Um, nothing more dangerous than the talons of a great horned owl, they're razor sharp. And so this is our, our new little one and it'll be with me for about a month. And then, and then uh, she'll be all feathered out and ready to go back to the wild. And you see the little tufts just starting to grow on her head. They get little, little feathers sticking up on the top of their heads. That's why they call them great horned owls because they have the uh, feathers. They're not horned, they're just feathers. So how is the bald eagle doing? Uh, the bald eagle, uh, again, is eating well and, and is healthy other than um, we're, it's still a, a long road to for it to grow in all of the feathers that it needs to be able to fly. It, the, for those of you that, that didn't know, the, our bald eagle that we got last year was a young bald eagle that wasn't fed sufficiently in the nest and had terrible feather growth and it could not fly. And so we've had it for about nine months now and we'll probably have it another year before it's feathered out sufficiently to be able to return it back to the wild. What's it, what's it like? What's day to day for that eagle as, as we're waiting? Well, again, because we don't want to acclimate it to, to people, it gets really no socialization from, from me or, or anyone else. Uh, it's, it's in our largest flight chamber, and it just uh, hangs out in the flight chamber, and, and it gets uh, fresh food and water every day, and that's pretty much it. Does, is he aware of Scout next door? Uh, I'm sure he's aware of Scout. He doesn't care. Um, you know, they, they're, they're not terribly sociable, though I, I will admit that the bald eagle is far more sociable than the goldens are. And, and so, you know, bald eagles will, will come together in, in fairly large groups uh, to feed, you know, on a carcass or feed, you know, on a trash dump or something along those lines because they're primarily a scavenger. And, and where the golden eagles are more solitary. Now, the golden eagle that we got, that we rescued um, two days ago, is um, uh, about two years old. And when it's feeling well enough, I will put it in with the bald eagle. And so the bald eagle will have a golden eagle for company for a while, for probably about a month uh, before we, uh, and because that's my largest flight chamber. and and they'll they'll share it until we can release it. <laughs>